In this next episode of our Founder Stories, we'll be hearing from Hong Feng, Chief Executive Officer of Xiaomi. Hong Feng will share his personal experience of the founder as the founder of Xiaomi, the initial challenges he faced, and its innovation journey in different countries as they expanded globally. He will also share insights into how Xiaomi is using its technology to support underbanked small and medium enterprises access credit. Let's now go to Hong Feng for his presentation. Hello everyone, my name is Hong Feng. I'm the co-founder of Xiaomi. Uh, Xiaomi is only 10 years old. Um, it's a relatively young company. That's the picture of eight founders. Uh, I'm the one in the yellow t-shirt. and You can see I have much more hairs than today. <laughs> So today I will just share some stories and thoughts uh, from the past 10 years uh, of Xiaomi's operations. Uh, I think the most important thing Xiaomi did right is we put a lot of emphasis on be friends with our users. And we involve a lot of with users, we do a lot of user engagement uh, in almost every aspect of operations from R&D uh, marketing and uh, uh, a lot of things. The first product of Xiaomi is our MIUI system. It's a mobile operating system based on Android. And uh, uh, when we first launched, we don't really have a mobile phone. So for the first year, our product is just MIUI. Uh, we recruit users and uh, uh, they will flash our ROM into their own mobile phone. So this is the first 100 users uh, we recruited online and for the first version, and uh, we uh, have all their usernames into the first flash screen just to show the appreciation we have uh, for their uh, engagement with us. So when we actually launch our mobile phone, we have uh, half million users with us already. Uh, those half million users will flash our own ROM into their existing phone, uh, and uh, doing a lot of uh, product development, uh, suggestions, improvement with us. They are very, very active in our community. Um, they send us tens of thousands of posts every day, including suggestions, uh, feedbacks, bug report. And they are very active because whatever they say, uh, we give them timely response. You can see all those threads with bug report. Uh, we have a status at the end of this every subject. It's either replied, solved, or recorded, or need further information. And it's not just you know customer contact team. We don't really have a customer contact team. Everybody is a contact team, engineers, management, and uh, um, you can see like in each thread, a lot of the users, uh, our, our our own engineers is uh, interacting with users directly on all issues. And sometimes when we are deciding on the features, uh, we have some different approach. We ask users to uh, vote on the solutions or give us some you know, their thoughts. And we're integrating their thoughts into our product. And sometimes uh, the users is uh, sending us a very comprehensive product definition document, PDD and pages of pages, very comprehensive and very professional. And, you know, I, a lot of time I'm joking with my own product team. I mean, you know, the user's PDD, sometimes it's much more professional than my own PM, which shows, you know, they are really dedicating their time and working with us. And we are updating our system every week. Every week we will push out a new version. And for every new version, we will list a few key features and the users will vote on which features they love the most and the engineering team responsible for that feature will get an internal popcorn award. And users just love this because they know that those engineers is actually rewarded by them, decided by them, not by the management. So, um, this is a sculpture in uh, our Beijing campus. Uh, you know, it's in the UI, but if you look closely, it's all the usernames of our users, um, UI users uh, embedded in the sculpture. 
it's a reminder for all the future management or the future employees. It's just the importance of communicating with users, of engagement with users, because they are the livelihood of this company. Those pictures just show we not only engage users online, but we having a lot of fun activities with them uh, offline as well. So every year, the management, the senior management will uh, sign tens of thousands of postcards to our users. And every few weeks, uh, we will fly to different cities. Our product manager engineers will, you know, have some user gathering and listening to their suggestions and having fun with them. And every year, we have an annual family dinner. And Nathan will um, uh, cook a dish personally uh, for our users. It's all very fun activities. I'll just show you some uh, pictures of those activities. You see, it's just like a party, like hundreds of users just hang out with our engineers, product managers, and you know, employees, and having fun and uh, have a, just have a good time. Uh, I'll show you one picture. This one user is shaving his hair with you know our local MI. It's just show like how users is a. Uh, it's, it's having fun with us. They just love us. And they love to, um, you know, brainstorm and having fun, hang out with other companies. And also they give us gifts. Uh, it's pretty rare for users to give gifts to, to a company. And, but in fact, we receive a lot of gifts. And this is one gift. It's a real Xiaomi phone. This is the phone made by one user. It took her one week to glue all this net together. That's the real Xiaomi. You know, it's a real Xiaomi phone. And uh, we are really honored and touched to receive gifts from users uh, who spend a very, very long time. It just shows their uh, love for the company and we're really, really, really touched. So the second thing I found for the past few years with Xiaomi is a lot of innovations is coming from cross-industry brainstorm. Okay, we invested a lot of uh, consumer appliance startups and uh, um, the teams consist of you know, people from the original traditional industry and also people from internet, people from software, people from you know, a mobile phone industry as well. So a lot of innovative features actually coming from people from different fields and they can bring in the different perspectives. I'll give a few examples. This is like a rice cooker. Uh, you know, for high-end traditional rice cookers, they have buttons on the, uh, on the rice cooker so that you can cook different, different types of rices. But however, there's just so limited spaces on the rice cooking machine. It's, it's the interface is really um, cramped. So uh, uh, we have a new solution. So we find out that for those high-end rice cookers, people buy rice in a package. So we build a database of all the barcode of those rice packages, and we collect uh, thousands of such options. So whenever a user buys their rice, uh, they can just you know scan it on our rice cooker apps. So we automatically know what kind of rice they're uh, trying to cook and we just download the uh, uh, temperature curve uh, algorithm into the rice cooking machine and we'll just cook accordingly. And uh, you know, this is a curve. This is uh, for each different rice. It has different heating solutions, different curves. Now, however, the user also can you know, adjust it in the app with a slide. So it's it's they want it a little bit softer, a little bit harder. It's you can you can you can adjust it just in your app itself. It's, uh, it's very fun, um, and also can submit their own solutions if they feel their rice cooking solution is better than official versions. They can they can they can submit to the uh, uh, the company and we will select it. It's again user engagement. So air conditioner is another example. So, um, First is we have a uh, um, temperature monitor devices where you can associate with the air conditioner. 
and you can put it uh, on the spot that you consider the most important because the room temperature is not average. And the traditional air conditioner collects the temperature from the controlling module. It's usually you know closer to the door, where we in most cases it's not really important in that position. So that's that's one thing I think is important. The second thing is how you control the curve. It's it's a real example from my personal experience because my wife will wake up almost every night to check on our kids because during the summer. Uh, if the temp temperature is 26, my kids will get cold. 27, they will get some rash on their skin because it's too hot. And uh, so it's it's very hard to um, you know to maintain how the proper temperature for the time being. However, in our air conditioner, you can control very precisely the temperature for each time period. Actually, for my own experience, I will put the first three hours to 26 so my kids will, can uh, get got to sleep very quickly. And then for the next four hours, 27, so it will not get cold. And then you turn it to 26 again, so just before maybe his skin get rash and the temperature will go down. And again, he will slowly wake up. So my wife is actually very satisfied with that. So it's a happy news. And also, this is we're also finding a lot of air conditioner now have the feature you can turn on it before you go back home, which is cool. However, we do it further in a way that we are combining with your mobile phone. So if we sense that you are getting closer within certain distance with your home, it will automatically turn on. It's something you can set, and it's a very very convenient. We're also integrating different, you know, smart devices together. Uh, this is like a smart doorbell. So, you know, for traditional doorbells, even you have a screen, you need to go to your door to see what's going on. Um, however, if uh, uh, in our TV integrate solutions, the smart doorbell will send the image directly to your um, uh, TV so that you can uh, talk to the guy on the door. You can even tell him just to leave the package on the door. You can pick up later. So, so it's, it's, it's all a lot of cool solutions. So that's all some examples of how we bring some interesting new features into this you know, traditional user scenario. It's just because the team is, have very different backgrounds, so we can think of some very uh, interesting solutions and it's been a very important uh, success factor uh, for Xiaomi. Uh, we are doing fintech business as well. I'm currently running a fintech division. Uh, there's a lot of innovations that's coming out of this as well. It's also due to you know the team is having different background and we have a team in technology in financial field and we have a lot of new ideas for the past 10 years personal life has been digitalized extensively so the financial solutions for personal uh, is very mature the payment the credit service and the face recognition and all my account opening uh, it's been very mature and everything become very very convenient and nowadays, it's uh, uh, the online mobile consumer financial services much more mature and comprehensive than 10 years ago. However, on the uh, company side, on the SME side, uh, the difference is not that much. However, I do feel for the next 10 years, a lot of things will happen. Because uh, the, uh, the 5G and industry IoT devices are ready, and the digitalization of the operation process is uh, picking up. So, I do believe in 10 years' time, uh, the uh, industrial uh, will be digitalized as well. So, Xiaomi is just as the technology platform. We will uh, help to make this transformation faster. 
and we will use our strengths in IoT de devices to capture a lot of real-time data from our industrial partners. And we'll combine all this data into a you know, data model where our financial institution partners have a much better time understanding. We just bridge the understanding from those two worlds and help the financial services to be much more accessible to the industry partners. And we help the data from industry partners to be much more readable for our financial institution partners. I'll just give one example. This is a, a, just a typical mom and pop shop. Uh, they will get, you know, purchase mobile phone from us and in turn uh, sell to end customers. Uh, they need capital to purchase phone from us. However, the financial institutions have a difficult time giving them credit on because they don't know if the money is really useful getting mobile phone. The second, uh, whether they can really sell it in time. And if they cannot sell, whether they can secure those phones as collaterals and everything. So, um, we give them a solution. So we have those digital uh, storage systems. So whenever um, we put a phone into the storage, it will recognize what kind of phone it is, so the barcode. And uh, whenever they sell the phone to end customers, the drawer will automatically pop up and they can get the phone out of it. So in all time, all the phone will be securely stored in this facility. And uh, our financial partners will always know how many phones are actually in there, what's the dollar value of all of those merchandises within the storage system. So which in turn, they can give a credit line to our mom and pop shops. This is just one simple example. Uh, we have many more uh, interesting examples of how we can convert data into a credit model for industry partners. So many, many things will happen when many, many new data become available. So that's my uh, sharing today. Thanks everybody for listening. Thank you. It's always fascinating to learn about the early beginnings of rising global tech companies straight from the founders themselves. And this session with Xiaomi is definitely one of them. Oh,